Global prices are primarily determined on the Chicago Commodity Exchange. They want to have a brick screen exchange. They are going to have a Moscow Metals Exchange. You see the, the transition here. They are using the suppression of all of the Western prices against us. Now, in a rapidly evolving global market, shifts in power and influence are reshaping the landscape of precious metals trading. Become an expert in your field with Andrew Sheckman's insightful analysis. Discover how China's Shanghai Gold Exchange, Russia's Moscow Gold Exchange, and Dubai's Gold Exchange will revolutionize price setting in the West. Buckle up as we explore the implications of these changes and uncover how they could impact your investments. In the world of commodities trading, a paradigm shift has begun. So, let's listen to him again. Uh, really, in particular, one thing. Um, and... It, it is in regards to a story that came out of of uh, out of Russia, out of out of a um, news agency called TASS, and it was an interview with a man named Yuri Ushakov, and he he is a works at the Kremlin. And basically came out and confirmed what we already knew that the BRICS nations plan to develop a new payment system based on blockchain. But what's really important to understand is the dynamics of it and what they know. And I want people to really pay attention here because the, the, what he says to me is really, 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 really telling as to why gold and silver and all of the world's commodities are behaving the way that they are. So I'm going to read this to you so that you understand rather than try and paraphrase it. We can talk about it in a moment. He says, all that leads to adopting a new international currency is that we really don't need to go large scale. Bricks is enough. He said, the idea of the currency is that there will be two baskets. One basket will be of national currencies of all the countries involved in the process, like the SDR, which is the special drawing rights of the International Monetary Fund, by the way, but with more clear and understandable criteria. Okay, so they're going to have a basket of, of a currency that's based upon local currencies and a basket of commodities. Now, we assume that main commodity will be gold because it is the world's only other tier one reserve asset. And the central banks have been buying it and repatriating it from the Bank of England and the New York Fed like it's going on style, right? So we understand that, right? And But here's the the interesting part. Well, also, he says it should be in a digital form, which means it can be used without the banking system. So it will be at least 10 times cheaper than the present transactions through banks and currency exchanges. And what he's talking about there is the... Um, like the, the Chinese have SIPS, the CIPS, which is the Cross Interbank Payment System, or Project Embridge, which was just utilized for a big trade. It allows these countries to trade, whether it be currencies as they are now or central bank digital currencies outside the SWIFT system. That's what the Project Embridge is. And that was dev devised by or developed by China, United Arab Emirates, and I think Singapore. But so, first of all, he's saying it's going to be a currency that will be digital that will be traded outside the SWIFT system, and it will be a basket of, of commodities on one end and a basket of local currencies on the other end. So there's a, that's what it is, right? But here's the important part that I want people to understand, okay? And it, it's, it's the most important part of everything. And it, he says this, the second part of the equation is price. For the moment, for the moment, for the moment, price is determined by Western speculation. We produce these commodities, we consume them, but we do not have our own price mechanism, which will balance supply and demand. During the COVID panic, the price for oil fell to nearly zero. Now he's wrong there, it actually fell to negative $40 a barrel, which is kind of the whole underlying factor here of a commodity exchange that can distort reality through speculation to the point where oil is negative $40 a barrel. And they did that because there was more oil than they had the ability to hold it in any of the refineries or the holding tanks. So you had all of these ships sitting out in the middle of the ocean filled with oil and, and there was no place to park it. So it was actually negative 40 a barrel. We'll pay you $40 to take our oil. That's how crazy it is. But 
Anyways, he says, it's impossible to make any strategic planning for economic development if you do not control prices of basic commodities. Price formation with this new currency will get rid of Western exchanges of commodities. Now, I've been saying this for a long time, that the Shanghai Gold Exchange or the Moscow Gold Exchange or the exchange in Dubai will take over for the price setting mechanism of the West. We already know that the LBMA, or excuse me, the LME, the London Metals Exchange, was purchased by the Chinese a few years ago. The LME deals mostly in base metals like copper and zinc and lead and steel. They do something with precious metals, but not a lot. So this is not just about precious metals. China owns the LME and they have just made a deal to where they are going to start warehousing the metals held and based backing the contracts trade on the trading on the LME. So Chinese will warehouse the metals in China, backing the contracts that are traded on the London Metals Exchange. Uh, you see here that they understand that the West has been suppressing the price of gold and silver. And they understand that and they are using it to their advantage. They are using it against us until they have bled dry all of the shelves. In fact, they just came out and said that they want to, to build a new BRICS grain exchange. And, he, and they say it's likely to change the face of the world grain market tremendously because after World War II, the United States um, wheat and corn exports dominated the markets. But now that's no longer the case. So they want to they don't want to have to sell their wheat and corn where they're selling just or producing just as much or more than the U.S. is where global prices are primarily determined on the Chicago Commodity Exchange. They want to have a brick screen exchange. They are going to have a Moscow Metals Exchange, a Shanghai Gold Exchange, a Dubai Gold Exchange. They are going to set the price for all of the world's commodities. They already own the LME. Do you see the, the transition here? They are using the suppression of all of the Western prices against us. Now, this is the first you've heard of them acknowledging it. I've always assumed they understood this, that they understood it and are using it to their advantage. It's Najitsu. Lose, use your jitsu. You use your opponent's leverage against them. And that's exactly what they're doing. They're using the make-believe Western prices to accumulate all of it and to misdirect the Western public into thinking gold and silver are archaic relics of the past. You should just own cryptocurrency and NVIDIA stock. At the same time, they're draining the exchanges of not just gold and silver, of grains like wheat, and soybeans and corn. You know, there was just a report that came out that, that uh, the Chinese are cutting corn contracts tremendously, like in half all the Western contracts. Why? Because Brazil is the second largest exporter of corn in the world and they are now buying it from Brazil and valuing it, paying for it in yuan. And so what is what is yuan? Oh yeah, it's convertible into gold on the Shanghai Gold Exchange immediately. So all of these new dynamics are taking place and, and what you are seeing not only is a changing of the guard where you're going to see the price setting mechanism change, but you're beginning to see contracts change where the wheat and the corn and the soybeans were all bought by or sold to the world by American farmers. That's now changing. Because I think the world is very tired of the fact that the, the commodity exchanges are, are, are priced in, in dollars, but priced in a way that is suppressive, priced in a way where the commodity exchanges or the futures contracts control the price rather than the underlying commodities. And these are the countries who, who accumulate them all. These are the countries who produce them all, that consume them all. So once they've accumulated all of the commodities that they can pickpocket, at, at pennies on the dollar, at that point, they will stop accepting because at that point, no one is going to sell at the make-believe prices that the West give us. At that point, you will see a transition to places like the Moscow Gold Exchange, to the Shanghai Gold Exchange, to other exchanges across the globe that will fairly price these commodities. And it will signal the end of the ability of the West to have any significance or influence on the pricing of all of these commodities and the fact that you have these finance ministers in the BRICS union talking about this is, is exactly what I assumed that they know exactly what's going on and they're just going to use it against us. Remember, the quest for wisdom is a lifelong pursuit and our channel is here to guide you every step of the way. So what are you waiting for? Dive deeper into finance 
uncover the latest market trends, and unleash your creative potential. Until next time, may your journeys be filled with discovery, growth, and boundless success. Thank you for being a part of our community. Like our videos, share, and subscribe. We look forward to seeing you on the next adventure.